So we've got Kyle Rowland here, covers the Toledo Rockets for the Toledo Blade. We're here to talk about new wide receiver coach, Kevin Beard, former Hurricane. He's been a Miami coach. But but Kyle, just can you kind of recap a little bit with, with Kevin's t- tenure there at Toledo? Yeah, I mean, I think he's a great coach. I think he's a, it's a great hire for Miami. Obviously, he's got the connections down there in South Florida, so that helps. Uh, but, I mean, Toledo's had a great offense under Jason Candle, which is who uh, Kevin worked for. Obviously, Miami folks are well aware of Jason Candle uh, after these last couple of seasons. Um, receivers have been really solid. Um, you know, all MAC guys each year, uh, some of the, you know, top leading receivers in yardage and touchdowns each year. Uh, I think like, the biggest kind of breakout guy he had was Matt Land a few years ago. Um, he came to Toledo from Georgia, really, you know, lit it up the final six games of the 2021 season, then transferred to Arkansas last year um, and had a, a pretty solid season at Arkansas. Uh, but, I mean, I think I think Kevin's a great hire. I mean, I think he's a great coach to begin with. I think he's a great kind of developer of players. I mean, Toledo is a development program. We're not recruiting four and five star guys. Um, and, you know, in Kevin's time here, there have been some draft picks. Um, but he just kind of can get the most and kind of squeeze every ounce out of the guys. Uh, but the area where I think he'll be huge for Miami is recruiting. I mean, you just have to be such a good recruiter um, at the power five level, especially kind of the elite power five level where Miami wants to be. Um, he's going to be going up against powerhouse programs. Um, his past, I mean, he's worked at Tennessee, Miami, Georgia. So he's got that experience and kind of knows what it takes and he's been a coach and a personnel guy. Um, so I think that's kind of a, a good mold uh, for what Miami needs right now. And he was a personnel guy at Miami before. He was a, a wide receivers coach, Georgia, um, even Toledo. He was a recruiting coordinator there in 2018. Since 2019, he's been the wide receivers coach. Uh, you touched on some of the names, the all-MAC guys. Three different guys over his four years uh, had received all-MAC honors. You know, with Jason Candle and his offense, can you kind of explain what was the importance of the wide receivers, what this offense is, you know, Kevin's role in it in that sense, but just maybe the passing game in particular led the Mac in passing in 2020. Uh, but just your thoughts on, on that and maybe what, what Kevin has learned working with Coach Candle there. Yeah, I mean, the offense, I mean, they want to be flashy and high flying and, and they generally have been, I mean, they've, they've ranked pretty highly throughout Jason's career. And a lot of that you think of, you know, vertical passing um, when, when Toledo played at Miami back in 20, I forget what year that was 17, maybe um, that, that team was just loaded. Logan Woodside, Deontay Johnson, like that offense, that's what, you know, Jason would hopefully want at all times, but, it's not just the quarterback and just the wide receivers. They still want a thousand yard running back. They want a bell cow guy who's reliable and they can give it to, which obviously if you have that opens up the passing game. Um, but I, I think generally what, what Kevin is good at is, I don't know, kind of opening up vertically downfield, big play threats. I mean, Toledo's offense last year, I mean, certainly I wouldn't say it was great. It was fine. I mean, they won the Mac. They won a bowl game. They won nine games or whatever. Uh, but that said, like if you look at Daquan Finn's stats, the quarterback, not real eye-popping, but the big playability is always there. Like it just seemed like every game they would hit some big, long, deep passes. Uh, Jerron Newton and Maddox both um, were, were pretty highly ranked in terms of wide receivers who caught – you know, 30 or more yard catches, 40 or more yard catches, kind of that area. Um, so so I think that's an area where Kevin's really good at. I think that's kind of something that Jason's really good at is like those big explosive plays. You know, if you could stay on Jawan Newton, he definitely uh, isn't intriguing. Again, kind of doing some research from afar, uh, the numbers he put up over 50 catches last season, over 800 yards and nine touchdowns is certainly impressive. But with what he did in year four there in the program compared to what he was a year ago, can you talk about maybe Coach Beard's, um, you know, how he's developed Newton in particular uh, and maybe the the strides that he made um, since he was under uh, Coach Beard? Yeah, no, I mean, that's – he's kind of one of those guys who came in, like, not like he was super acclaimed, you know, just a dude coming to Toledo. Like, they, people weren't expecting, you know, some freshman to, to go off um, and, and didn't have, like, a super, I don't know, highlight – 
worthy career, whatever you want to describe it before that. So last summer, Jason Candle told me, said, hey, listen, Jerron Newton is going to be the best receiver in the MAC next year. And it's like, whatever, like coaches say stuff like that. They, they like their guys and whatnot. Um, he, he probably wasn't the best receiver in the MAC last year, but he was really good. I mean, he was kind of the go-to guy. He made kind of the biggest catches. He was an all MAC guy. Um, I actually just talked to him yesterday. Uh, Toledo spring practice just started. Um, I mean, I, I think he's kind of critical to Toledo's success this season. Um, they bring back a ton of playmakers. He's one of them. He's been mentored by Kevin, as you said. I mean, he kind of turned him into like, I don't know, like a, a, a possession receiver who, I don't know, only got on the field, you know, not, not a ton to like, if it's third and 10, like you got to cover Juwan Newton. So, I mean, he's one of those types of guys. Uh, it's interesting. His brother is actually an All-American defensive lineman in Illinois and Toledo opens at Illinois this season. So that's kind of a storyline people have talked about. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the current era of NIL, transfer portal, everything, I mean, when there's a bond between players and a coach leaves, I, I think you always have to worry about, hey, you know, could he follow that guy somewhere? And, and I remember Coach Beard at different levels. Again, the might. My- it really goes back. I was actually just uh, reading through an article I wrote about him as a player at Miami. Then I remember him being the coach uh, at Miami. I remember him coaching at the high school level and seven on seven levels. I always remember with him just being a communicator, you know, being very good at that. Uh, I remember him, you know, having that leadership quality as a player. You know, I think all these things, it's really interesting to see how his career has gone um, from his playing days into coaching. Uh, you touched on some the big play stuff, maybe points of emphasis with coach. What were some of those big points of emphasis for him, uh, for the wide receivers while he was at Toledo that look, th- these wide receivers have to do these few things uh, to be successful. Th- these really things that coach really hammered down with his group. Well, I'll answer that in one second. I just wanted to touch on what you said previously. Um, I-, I totally agree. He's an unbelievable communicator. I did a big story for Toledo's bowl game this year. They played in the Boca Raton bowl and Toledo recruits South Florida like crazy. So I did talk to several of the coaches who recruit down there. Kevin's obviously one of them. Just about what is it about South Florida that makes it so important for Toledo to have guys from there, how to recruit the area, the relationships, just all that kind of stuff. I talked to him for probably like 30 minutes about it. I mean, he's just unbelievably good. I could send that to you. Um, But, I mean, he just gets it. I mean, he obviously went to Miami. His coach at Miami is from down there. Um, I mean, I think he will be a dynamite recruiter. There's no doubt. Um, but going back to, to what you asked. So one thing that I think goes unthought of by fans, and it's, it's a stickler kind of thing for coaches that wide receivers don't want to do and don't think about, you gotta, you gotta block too. Like you can't just be out there and catch, you got to pass block. You got to block for your other guys. Um, so I think that's a big one. I mean, being a guy who can win one-on-one matchups, I mean, I, I think that's kind of a, a big Kevin Beard thing. Um, I don't think lately Toledo's had like overly physical wide receivers, uh, but there have been times in the past they have. And I mean, I think that's something that, especially at, at a Miami, when you're going up against really top flight defensive backs in the ACC uh, you you got to win those kind of defensive battles. Um, but I, I mean, I just think a lot of the stuff too is like off the field, like whether it's leadership qualities, you know, being good in the locker room, being a good teammate, um, academics, Toledo's really excelled in academics lately. Um, so I, I don't know. I just think all that kind of stuff kind of makes like the well-rounded player. And that's kind of like the player Kevin was. I mean, he, he was a really solid player, obviously played for a national championship team. Um, but he wasn't like Andre Johnson or Reggie Wayne, who was, you know, this NFL star. Um, he was just a very well-rounded, good player. Yeah, absolutely. And Kyle, definitely send that over. I'm going to link it in the comments below. I'll, I'll pin it to the top for our viewers to, to be able to read that article. Let, let's stay with that, though. The recruiting part of it, you mentioned a couple of times. I definitely wanted to get into it. What, what, what were some of those takeaways with that or what's made him a good uh, recruiter uh, in, in your mind? I mean, just relating to players. I mean, anyone, anytime a coach is on the younger side, I just think they're better because you just relate better to players. Um, But 
I mean, specifically to Florida or South Florida, I mean, it's just a guy who's so familiar with the area. And I mean, he can just kind of tell you, I mean, I just, well, stepping into that Miami job and recruiting, I, I just think he's so good. I mean, because you're speaking from actual real experiences. I mean, it's the same like thing for for Mario. I mean, he played there, he coached there. Like it's, it's in your heart, it's in your blood. Like it's you can just be so passionate about it, and you don't have to. I mean, not that coaches are manipulating or whatever, but like it, it just comes across as so authentic. And I think at Toledo, he was a very authentic guy. Um, Yes, it's a development program, but at the same time, I mean, they, they do want good players. And generally, I mean, they, yeah, the wide receivers got better, but they wanted them for a reason. Like they, they saw something in those guys um, and, and I, I, it proved, you know, right because generally their receivers are pretty good. Um, so I don't know. I just think he's kind of the, the the total package of a modern recruiter. Just young, can relate to kids, played the position. Now he played at the school that he was at. Um, I think he'll be really good. Yeah, it is going to be interesting to see how he's taken all of his experiences uh, as a player, as you mentioned, and then all these kind of things and just being at Toledo. Uh, also, too, I want to go back a little bit at these standouts for Toledo, these guys that have been the all-conference guys. To me, what, what stands out again, I'm, I want to talk about how they're all, they've are all they all been kind of different. You know, with Newton, as we've mentioned, 5'11", 190, um, you know, Mitchell, 6'3", you know, with Isaiah with 6'4", they've had some bigger receivers as well. Um, maybe the different styles of receivers that either he likes or what works with him. And, and essentially it seems like he can work with different styles of receivers. Yeah. I mean, I think one thing, and I'm not as smart as a coach, so, so maybe this is different, but I mean, at Toledo, you just have to be willing to work with whatever body type you, you got. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, certainly, you know, smallish guys succeed, at the big time programs. I mean, more and more, I think you, you kind of got to be six feet or, or taller. Um, but I don't, I mean, Jason Candle, Kevin Beard, uh, Robert Wiener, the quarterbacks coach at Toledo. I mean, they, they don't really care if you're five ten, five eight, six five. Like if you have the skills to do it, they will coach you. They will put you in a position to succeed. Um, another just kind of anecdote. One of, Toledo's wide receivers is actually deaf. He's got cochlear implants, did a big story on him. I mean, Kevin was a huge part of his recruitment and Larry Stevens is a player's name. And he said like when Kevin came to his school to recruit him, um, he, he didn't care that he, he like didn't ask about him being deaf. It was like not a part of the conversation. And that was like one of the things that really resonated with him because it was just about football and everyone else. It was about, not hearing and hearing and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, I mean, I, I think he's a foxhole guy for his players um, and, and really believes in them and doesn't matter what sort of ailment or height challenges or if they're only weigh 160 pounds or whatever, like he's going to kind of put them in, in a position to succeed. Yeah, it's another fascinating story that you're dropping. Another article, uh, definitely recommend for people to watch. Anything else, Kyle, uh, that we've not touched on? We've touched on some of these receivers that he's had, kind of some recruiting stuff. Is there anything else that that you want to add with 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 Coach Beard that that's that maybe your takeaways um, during his time at Toledo? Yeah, I mean, I guess my takeaways. He was always one of my favorite coaches to talk to. I mean, everyone kind of has guys that you know give great answers and can really explain the game well to report. I mean, I didn't play football. I obviously know about football. I cover it, but he just easily explains stuff to, for, for people like me to, to understand. And this is why they're doing this, or this is why they didn't do that. Um, just an incredibly nice guy. Uh, it was always funny. I, I I'm from Ohio. I, I attended Ohio state. So I, I've joked around with him before about the Ohio state, Miami national championship game and stuff like that. Uh, but just a, a really, really fun, nice guy. Yeah, that, that's great to hear. That's Those were my memories of him. I remember I touched on this magazine article that I wrote. Um, it, it was a big headline. He, I know he was personally excited about it with, with what he went through as a player battling back from injuries. And the name of the 
the the headline of the the article uh, headline of the magazine was called the mentor and it's kind of interesting how everything has kind of come full circle he's still yep. doing that he has a passion for either teaching peers or younger players and now as a coach so it, it's definitely exciting i'm curious to see how it all works out miami starts spring ball march 4th finally get going another new coach kyle i appreciate all the insight definitely what uh, you know check out kyle's links uh we'll post those below but kyle i appreciate your time thank you it was really fun